G'day and welcome to the Ball Boys Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Today we are talking about the best lines of the week, the worst lines of the week, who are the hot ads, and breaking down all the relevant fantasy basketball news. Let's go! Talking about practice. LeBron James with no regard for human life. AB Basketball! Back out to Allen. His three pointer. Bang! Curry for three. Wow! Unbelievable. Making it rain in New York. We the North are now we the champions. Not the destination. G'day and welcome again to the Ball Boys Fantasy Basketball Podcast. I am your host, Mitch Casey, and you can find me on Twitter at Ball Boys NBA and on Instagram at Ball Boys Fantasy Basketball. Today we are doing our weekly recap show, going over all the happenings in fantasy basketball from the previous week, week two in fantasy basketball, back into a regular schedule. I've uh, officially moved into my new place, so uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying the new setup. We are um, slowly getting a bit more of a studio vibe going at the moment. Um, it, it's starting to, uh, you know, we'll build it up slowly over time, but with a bit more space now that uh, at my place, we'll, we'll see how we go. So let me know down in the comments if you guys like the new setup, and uh, we will continue to evolve it as things go along. So, um, like I said, today, a bit of a recap show, going to go through um, our fantasy weekly awards, some hot topics, lots of news to get through, actually lots of uh, interesting things happening in the NBA, must add players, um, watch list or streaming, or maybe add players, droppable players, all of that good stuff. Let's get stuck into it. We are going to start off with the... Uh, 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 Sweet Fantasy Basketball Award. And the award for this week goes to, for week number two, the Sweet Sweet Fantasy Basketball Award goes to Kyrie Irving. Now, Kyrie Irving uh, has put up a huge week this week. He had four games. Uh, he's the second ranked player on a per game basis, but in the four games that tipped him over, Shea Gildas Alexander, who was the other guy who was tying for his spot there, uh, but he put up this week 34.5 points, three assists, uh, six and a half rebounds, four assists. Sorry, what did I say? Three threes, six and a half rebounds, four assists, a steal and a half, and a block and a half on field goal percentage of 51% and an 89.7% free throws and only 2.3 turnovers. Just an absolute enormous week for, for Kyrie Irving. Um, he is in my Locked On Fantasy Basketball team. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to use his last game this week because I stuffed up and uh, forgot about the game's cap um, setting in that in that league. So, uh, again, just another message to make sure you know your leagues. Um, I should practice what I preach, but unfortunately, it slipped that one. So, But Kyrie Irving, excellent week this week. Number two ranked player. He is a guy that I was preaching to go out and make sure you get him in the second rounds of drafts because he was someone that, you know, we knew he's going to be top 10, top 8, top 5 even per game. There's a lot of risks involved with a player like Kyrie, but he's been healthy. He's looked great so far. He's played every every game so far for the Nets. Obviously, it's very early in the season. Things can change, and he's already... Uh, you know, in a bit of hot water with some of the comments and, and things he said on social media. I won't get into that today, but I don't think it's going to cause him to miss any time or anything like that at this stage, but we are always uh, just a little bit anxious of <laughs> things he says uh, and things he posts out to the media. I don't know, just the general weird behavior that can cause him to miss time, but so far, so good. He is someone who, if you're able to get in the second round of the draft, what he's done so far has definitely encouraged you. And I think that this week, just an absolutely absurd uh, week. The the one steal, one and a half steals, one and a half blocks blows me away. Uh, he's actually not a bad shot block. I don't expect this from him, obviously, on a week-to-week basis. But he actually is someone who can get you sort of 0.6 blocks per game as a point guard. He's super efficient. We know that. Um, the assists are okay. They're not elite, but the scoring, the threes, the efficiency, he He's actually a good steals guy as well. So Kyrie Irving is our winner of this week's uh, Sweet Sweet Fantasy Basketball Award. Uh, the next award here is the uh, the Loser Award. La, 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 loser. And this week's winner of the Loser Award is 
Paul George. Now, Paul George, uh, there was a lot of contenders for this award, actually, this week. A lot of guys who really stunk it up. And uh, if you are an uh, owner or someone who has Paul George on your fantasy basketball team, uh, I would really love it if you guys are watching all over on YouTube. If you let me know how you went this week and if there's anyone who actually managed to win their fantasy basketball matchup with Paul George on their team. If you drafted Paul George in the second round and you won your matchup, uh, let me know down in the comments because if you did, props to you because he sucked this week. He sucked. (laughs) Um, Wow. He was the 356th ranked player. 356th from a guy that you drafted inside the top 20. Uh, I know there's fluctuations on a week-to-week basis, but 356. Uh, wow. Um, he played 32 and a half minutes as well, which is the other extremely troubling thing. So the minutes were there. He he did, and that's per game value. He only played two games this week, um, putting up uh, stats of 12 points, one three, uh, five rebounds, three assists, half a steal, no blocks. He shot 29% from the field, uh, 100% free throws. Oh, that's great. He hit two, uh, average two free throws. So he hit four this week and three and a half turnovers. So just absolutely putrid from Paul George. Um, it's been really, really rough for the Clippers going early on. Uh, Kawhi Leonard's obviously sitting a lot of games. He's getting advice for his uh, tightness in his quads and his knee. Uh, Paul George hasn't had it going yet. It's been really, really tough. Uh, if it's a zoo much, has been up and down as well as the only other really fantasy relevant players. You've got your other guys, Paul George, sorry, not Paul George, uh, Norman Powell and Robert Covington, um, Marcus Morris, all those guys are just back end at, at best kind of fantasy rosters, but yeah, very, very discouraging here that Paul George in this week was, um, yeah, it, it just didn't help you. He actively hurt you in most of your lineups. If you're punting the field goals, then it's sure it helps a little bit. But what else has he given you this week? At one three per game, so he gave you two threes for the entire week. He gave you 24 points for the entire week. Only gave you six assists, 10 rebounds for the entire week. It's just absolutely terrible. Um and yeah, it's just, it's so hard. These Clippers players, their schedule, their restings and all those kind of things. It's really, really hard to trust them. I was worried about them going to the season. Maybe I should have been more worried because it's, well, at least early on, it's, it's looked really, really poor. Um, I, I think he'll be fine and I think he'll bounce back, but the fact that he's capable of putting up this kind of a week on any given week, depending on the schedule and how the Clippers are rolling. Um, you know, Kawhi Leonard, I don't I don't even think Kawhi Leonard played the basketball this week. So this was without Kawhi when he comes back. Like, what's Paul George going to look like? It's, 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 really, it's really not good. You can't do anything about it. You can't trade him because people are just going to be selling you the lowest of low offers. You've just got to kind of cross your fingers and hope for the fact that um, he is going to be better than this. But Paul George is very deserving of the uh, fantasy loser of the week. And uh, our final award, again, I'm still looking for a good uh, soundbite for this one here, but the Future Dynasty Star Award. I've I've gone, I'm pretty liberal with the rules around this award, so... No real ranking in here, but just sort of a guy that I wanted to highlight for, for Dynasty managers. He's probably owned in a lot of Dynasty uh, leagues out there, but I want to really highlight Dyson Daniels. Uh, he played his first sort of meaningful minutes in the NBA this week. He only played one game. I think he is out uh, now. Is it illness? There's a lot of guys getting sick. I can't remember what he's out for. Let's just quickly check that one here. Dyson Daniels. Oh, sorry. It's going to be... But he played the one game. He played when uh, there was a lot of guys out for the Pelicans. Um, his ankle. Okay, sprained ankle early in the season that caused him to miss the second game. Okay, yeah. So he is. he played the one game. He's played two games so far. But the first game, he only played three minutes. I think it was pretty much garbage time. This last game, this past week, played 22 minutes against Dallas uh, and put up 11 points, three assists, Oh, sorry, two assists, three steals, a block, three rebounds, shot 80% from the field and 100% from the free throw line. So the percentage is obviously not going to be that good, but I just wanted to highlight the fact that Dyson Daniels is a player that I really, really like. I think I had him, I think he was top six. I think he was the, or maybe he was even top five. I'm pretty sure he was the guy behind my Ivy, Paolo, Jabari, and Chet. 
tier. Those, those were my consensus top four. I think I ended up moving Dyson Daniels ahead of Shaden Sharp into number five. It was kind of those two in that next kind of drop-off tier for me. Um, he went at pick eight in the draft. A perfect fit, in my opinion, for the Pelicans. They have a renowned um, coach, uh, coaching staff over there in, in, in terms of player development, especially shooting. Uh, their shooting coach is very renowned there. Helped uh, players like Lonzo Ball improve his jump shot. Helped players like... Um, Herb Jones shoot much, much better than we saw him shoot in uh, in college. And now Trey Murphy, Trigger Trey, is uh, lighting the NBA up with his three-point shooting ability. So uh, that was his big weakness in the G League last year, but he is a player that I think is incredibly smart. He has a very high basketball IQ. He's an excellent defender. He's long. He's a good and willing passer. He's a strong rebounder for his position as well. So... He's going to find it tough to break into minutes. This is a really deep Pelicans team. Um, now, this this performance here to me is a very nice glimpse on what we can expect to see from him. It might take a little while, but I don't necessarily think it's crazy to think that at some point this season he takes over um, Alvarado in terms of that backup position or someone like a Najee Marshall is is starting at the moment with players out. I can easily see Dyson Daniels stepping into that role. The issue is that they do need spacing around a player like Zion and, and Dyson Daniels doesn't really provide that. Um, so his his opportunity this season I think is going to be limited. So you might find at some point when the noise breaks down after this, this game and obviously he's missed time with the ankle, you might be able to execute a bit of a buy low potentially if, if someone has a Dyson Daniels and they need immediate production and you're willing to wait a little bit more. I think Dyson Daniels has a potential to be a dynasty fantasy stud. So he is the winner of that award for this week with his uh, first uh, meaningful minutes in the the NBA and a player, an Aussie, fellow Aussie that I really, really do like. Uh, so I think he's going to be uh, a mainstay in our fantasy teams for a while. Let's go on to some hot topics now, guys. Now, obviously, the big news for the week is the um, is the Josh Primo cut or the, the fact that the, the Spurs have waived Josh Primo. It's come out recently that he has been... Um, allegedly uh, exposing himself to female members of the San Antonio um, staff. And before that news was even released, he was obviously waived by the Spurs. So I don't necessarily want to get too much into the... um, uh, the non-basketball aspects, things of this, but it's obviously very serious allegations. It's not something that uh, I think can be tolerated in any workplace. And obviously the NBA is something that, you know, as much as we like to watch it and enjoy what's happening out there on the court, it is much more than that. It is a, it is a workplace. And I think that the Spurs doing this, um, I think they're a class organization. They're, they're not going to stand for these kind of things. Um, I think that they're going to have a zero tolerance policy for these kind of things. And, uh, you know, I joke a lot about the fact that they drafted him. I think was it pick 12 last year. I thought it was a ridiculous pick at the time. He's shown some improvement on the court uh, since then, but it's still not someone who I never really thought had a super high ceiling. His fantasy game never translated very well. But aside from that, um, it is obviously a big call to just cut a player that you've invested a lot. They've picked up his third-year option. You've invested some money in him. You've invested uh, draft capital in him. So it's a very, very strong uh, message to send. I think it's an important message to send. Um, but it definitely took me very much by surprise on on the uh, the morning that the news leaked. Or oh, not leaked, I, I suppose. The, the wave... Uh, news dropped. I thought for, for real that, that Shams had been hacked. That's how surprised I was. I legitimately thought that was the case. And then, of course, the news of uh, why he was dropped uh, has come out. So in terms of, from a fantasy basketball point of view, um, I think that this definitely helps solidify the the Trey Jones acquisition. Um, if you've drafted him late, I think this has helps him. One of my fears for Trey Jones throughout the season was the fact that because the, the Spurs were rebuilding and they um, were very much not committed to uh, any certain player as their star of the future, maybe outside of Keldon Johnson and Devin Vassell, that there was going to be a lot of tinkering through the lineups. And I think that this removes at least a little bit of a threat of that happening. You might still see um, some players like Malachi Brennan. Um, who's the other guy that they drafted? 
uh, slips my mind just for now. But they've got a few other younger guards, but they're not necessarily your traditional point guards. So I think this does really help Trey Jones and solidify his value. I don't think it necessarily helps him boost his value, but I, I think it just avoids that threat of future slip in value. Um, so that's all we're going to talk about there for Josh Primo. I don't know. I, I, it's still very too early to see if someone's going to come and pick him up. Um, he's not a guy that really troubles us in fantasy basketball anyway. So I think if unless he goes to... He was already on a scrub team with the Spurs, and he's not going to have value on a team like that. He's probably not going to have a value on any other team. So in terms of his landing spot, I really don't think that there's a, there's a landing spot out there that means that we have to go rush and add him off the waiver wire. So I think that it really just helps solidify the uh, the value of Trey Jones from a fantasy basketball point of view. The other news that I wanted to touch on here was the jumbo starting lineup for the Orlando Magic. Uh, and the, the fact that fantasy basketball, especially on Twitter, is being um, where under bowl bowl mania at the moment because he is obviously someone who's the hot name he's moved to the starting lineup we've had the injuries to all the guards in the Orlando Magic team um Cole Anthony has has now been out. He's been ruled out, I think, for the next six to eight weeks. Uh, Fultz and Suggs have yet to make their returns. So they've gone with the jumbo lineup. They're basically starting Paolo at the one. Franz out there, he's kind of the other sort of combo guard. And then you've got players like, um, uh, who's their other guy? Wendell Carter Jr. is their center. And obviously, Bol Bol out there. And I'm blanking again. Anyway, he's he's not a very good fantasy player. So the Bol Bol news is the big one. He's obviously been added in a lot of leagues. I think that we'll get to our must roster players later. I think the Bowl Bowl is a must roster. Pl- sorry, a must roster player. I would caution though that I don't know how. I've seen people spending, you know, a third of their Fab budget on acquiring Bowl Bowl, um, half of their budget on Fab getting Bowl Bowl. I think that he's a good ad, and I think there's definitely a higher upside there. I would just caution that whenever these guys do come. Back. I don't necessarily think that Bol Bol stays in that starting lineup. He definitely is someone who has a good permanent production and he could retain some value uh, even if he's coming off the bench. And it, all it really would take would be like an injury to someone like a Wendell Carter Jr., an injury to uh, a Paolo Benquero, one of those types, and he could really rise in value and skyrocket. So he is a nice stash there, but I definitely want to be viewing him more of like a... He's in a Kongwu Hardenstein... Isaiah Jackson type player who's got a short term bit of elevated value at the moment because there's injuries to the team. He's not the guy that's going to come in, I think, and demand 28, 30 minutes a night and let's go. This is Bowl Bowl's team now. Uh, I definitely don't think that that's the case. He's a good ad. He's good at blocks. He's good at field goal percentage. He can hit some threes as well. Um, decent enough rebounder as well. He had his first double double the other day. So I think he's an ad, but just temper your expectations. It might even be if he can string together a few decent games you might even see him turn into a bit of a sell high, in my opinion, because, uh, yeah, fantasy basketball Twitter definitely has bowl bowl fever at the moment. So I think that... um I, I don't know. With the, they're very, very quiet on the injury front news with the guards. I think, from my understanding, they're, they're getting pretty close to a return, maybe another few games away. Um, I'll... I'll Tweet out any news that I see about those guys on Twitter, obviously, at Ball Boys NBA. But um, at this stage, not too sure just yet. But I think when those guys do come back and they ramp their minutes back up, you will see a player like Ball Ball return to the bench. Um, the other news that we're going to talk, talk, uh, tackle here is the Damian Lillard calf sprain. He's going to be reevaluated in one to two weeks, so about a week and a half from now, the time of recording. I think that... Um, the only real thing that I've sort of said about this one, if you're in a deeper league, I'd be taking a flyer on Shaden Sharp. Uh, I think he's a watch still for 12-team leagues. He's someone that um, didn't blow us away, but I, I just think he's really good. And I've speculated, and I, I, I don't fully believe this, but I wouldn't be shocked if by the end of the season or, or even after this little stretch, if Shaden Sharp remains in the starting lineup, that could be something that I, I think we could see. I just think he's really, really good. He was someone, he's obviously a mystery box in the draft, um, but the Blazers apparently did their research on him very heavily. They really liked him. Damian Lillard really likes him. I think he works well playing off the ball with a Lillard and a, and a uh, Simons as well. He's athletic as hell. Like I don't know if you've seen the highlights, those dunks that he's getting up, head at the rim. He is efficient as well. I think he has the capability to be a really good defender with his size and length. So 
I said that I think he could start over over um, over Hart. He could honestly start even over Jeremy Grant, who's been pretty poor this week. Um, but I, I'm not predicting it. But I'm just saying that I I wouldn't be shocked. And if I'm in a deep league, I take that flyer. In a standard league, I'm watching it very closely to see how he goes over his next few games. You might not necessarily use him because I know they've got a few games on some high volume days. But it's still a situation that I'm monitoring for the rest of the season value that Sharp could potentially have. Just because I really do think he's a he's a good player. His fantasy game is not as amazing as his actual impact, I think. He's, he's definitely a scorer, an efficient scorer. If he can bring the defensive stats, like the steals, blocks, and, and also maybe some assists, that he could have some good value, but I think that he is someone that could benefit. Uh, the other player that benefit is Winslow. He got a bit of elevated minutes in the first game. Um, he's decent, low upside, but again, in a deeper league, if you just want a sturdy guy to give you some assists, some steals, uh, some decent enough field goal percentage, I think that he is someone that you could look at again, though the upside, I think, is a bit limited for him. Um and the last bit of news that we're going to talk about that happened today, Russell Westbrook coming off the bench for the Lakers. He played well. The Lakers won. So congrats to the Lakers. You uh, you got your first dub. Um, avoided going 0-6 for the first time in 70 years, um, which is good. You know, props to him. He did look good. I'll, I'll put my hand up and say, obviously, I'm not the biggest Russell Westbrook fan, but he did look good today. Um, what did he have? I think he had 18, 8, and 8. He was efficient. I think he hit all four of his free throws, if I just make sure that those stats are correct. Uh, pull up the box score here. Um, yes, 18, oh, sorry, 18, 8, and 3 assists, a steal and a block. Um, in fact... Oh, no, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong game. That was the previous game against the Timberwolves, which he did also come off the bench. Um, so for today, yeah, 18, 8, and 8, no steals, no blocks, uh, 6 of 12, so 50%, hit two threes, and hit all four of his free throws with three turnovers. He was a plus 18 on the court. So he did well. He still played his 31 and a half minutes, so that's excellent. Maybe this helps his value. I'm still very skeptical, though. I think you can still hold on to him if you want what he potentially could give you. I don't think that we're going to see a dramatic change, though. Um, The Denver Nuggets, they didn't play all too well. Um, Their bench, which obviously he feasted on, especially I think it was in the third quarter, he did really well. Um, We're we're pretty poor defensively, and I think that teams will adjust to this. But it is obviously a new wrinkle in his rotation, and you could prove to give Russell Westbrook a little bit of life. So if you really wanted to take a fly, you could go and grab him. Be aware the percentages are not going to be good like this. It's not He's not going to shoot 100% from the free throw line. He's not going to shoot 50% from the field. That's just not happening. He's just not doing that. But it might be enough that he can get more usage with LeBron not on the court for more stretches when he's out there. That definitely could help Russell Westbrook. Um, that's that's the saving grace. I think that that is the only thing that you could see that classic Russell Westbrook junk time counting stats uh, could seem a bit of a boost. Um, but again, the the stuff that we've always worried about Russell Westbrook in terms of the percentages, the low threes, the low steals, and the high turnovers are still going to be there. Um, but it could help him get his rebounds and assists and points back up to uh, at least semi-productive levels. So for that reason, I think he is an okay hold as long as as you are willing to take on the um, deficiencies in his game, which for a lot of the time, I personally am not. But if you are uh, absolutely, you can do it. And in a points league, I would definitely encourage it. All right, let's move on to our must-add players. I've only got three must-add players. And as we go along, I'm like last week, we did a bunch of must-add guys. This week, there's not going to be as many. And I expect this list to be smaller for most of the season. The first week, you usually have a bunch of guys that you can add. Then it starts to settle in and we can sort of see who needs to be on rosters and then the good guys are already on rosters. But Bol Bol is our number one. We've already spoken about him. Jock Landale is the second one as a short-term streamer whilst DeAndre Ayton is out. I think he's missing the next one to two weeks. So Jock Landale, he did come off the bench today for the for the Suns, but he did play more minutes than Bismarck Biombo. He played, what did he play? Uh, put over to Phoenix. He played 23 and a half minutes, put up 16 and 7, a steal and a block. Really good efficiency. Hit all his free throws. He's a good fantasy permanent producer, so I think that he can have short-term value. Don't know if the upside is super high, um, but he is definitely going to have an increased opportunity. Um, so I think that he is a must roster if you need those classic big man stats. He's not going to hurt you anywhere. So um, again, though, short-term streamer, which obviously can be useful. 
The next guy that I think is a must roster player or a must-add player if he's on your waiver wire, is Jalen Williams from the OKC Thunder. He played his first game after having, I think it was a hamstring injury. Don't quote me on that, but he was out for a little while. Uh, played his second game of the season, the first one where he clipped six minutes, which was his first game, but played twenty, nearly 27 minutes tonight. 13 points, three rebounds, three assists, four steals, a block, shot Uh, 62.5% from the field, hit all his free throws. Um, Did have three turnovers, but that's okay, whatever. And this this OKC team, it's just really, really lacking talent. And I think that he could potentially be maybe the third or fourth best player on this team, depending on what you think about Lou Dort. So I think obviously you've got Shea, you've got Giddy. They're the clear number one and two. Jalen Williams has every opportunity to be the second best player on this team. Probably uh, absolutely the second best guy on offense. Lou Dort obviously is a great defender. Uh, I don't think Poku's coming in and really doing much um, this season. So I think that J- Jalen Williams is definitely someone I'd be happy to take a flyer on. He's one of those higher upside guys that if it doesn't work out in the next week or two, you can then move on. But I think I would absolutely be adding him uh, based on what we've seen so far, based on what we know of him from college and how he performed in the preseason. I think you can get some good value out of him. So he is a must-add player. These next guys, um, we're talking maybe ads watch list sort of guys. We mentioned him before, but Bismack Biombo was actually the starter for the um, Phoenix Suns. He played less minutes than, um, than Jock Landale did today, but he still did put up 22, what was it, 22 minutes? Let me just double check that one. Yeah, it's at 21.59, so nearly 22 minutes. He only put up five rebounds and five points, but he also put up five blocks and hit his only shot from the field. Um, so he had one field goal attempt, so super low usage. Um, not as exciting, but he could be a streamer for blocks. Um, you know, maybe he gets more usage in the next game. He, he, he obviously has the starting role, so playing with someone like a Chris Paul definitely can elevate those kind of players. Um, don't think the upside is especially high, but again, if you really need those blocks, you really need those big men stats, he could be someone, especially in the deeper league, that you absolutely have a look at. Um, Caleb Martin, I've got him here on the maybe ads, even though you might consider him a must-add player. I'm not putting him in the must-add players because obviously he, he does what he does and he's only going to suit certain teams. If you need points and threes, um, you, you're not really going to get that from him. But if you need good defensive stats, some solid percentages, some low turnovers, he will rank really well and he's probably a really good a roto player. But I don't necessarily think he fits every single team. So um, have a look on what your team needs and I think Caleb Martin is going to be pretty safe in terms of his minutes and his role. Um, I've got him in a few teams because I am looking for those things, but um, by no means do I think he's a must-roster player in every sense of the word that he's going to be beneficial for every team. Um, the next guy here that we've got here is um, Jeremy uh, Jeremy Sohan. Um, so Jeremy Sohan is someone that was cooking after the um, his last game, the last few games, in fact. So I think that he is someone that could be an ad if you can be a bit patient. I think he was ill, so he missed the last game. But if he comes back and keeps his starting role, I think he's someone that you definitely could add. All right, last little segment for today, guys. We're going on to the droppable players. Just going to rattle through these guys really quickly. I think Dennis Smith Jr., whilst he's been a good streamer, I believe Terry Rozier is getting closer to a return. So you don't necessarily have to drop him, but he is a guy that you could drop if there's another player out there that you want to make the switch. I think his value is limited and is going to be coming to an end soon. He's also been kind of harmful for your percentages, and if you haven't been able to tolerate that, it's okay, I think, to move on from him, even though there might be still a little bit of value left and he maybe plays another one, one or two games as a starter, but I think it's okay to move on for him now. Um, Patrick Beverly, minutes seem to be dropping down. Uh, he just isn't providing enough right now. You could hold on to him if you still need those steals and blocks, but it's not really, really high upside. And I think that Dennis Schroeder is going to come back in soon. So the upside is limited. So I think he's a player you can move on from. Colin Sexton is a guy that I think you can drop. Um, his upside from a fantasy point of view, even in a a 30-minute-a-night role where he's scoring over 20 points per night, is actually not that great. He's not a good fantasy player. He's great for points. He's a good points league guy. So in those situations, you're not dropping him. But in a category, nine-category league, when you're stashing someone who's coming off the bench and the overall upside later is actually not that high, I don't know if he's worth the hurt in the meantime. A lot of people will disagree with that one, but I personally think if you're holding on to Colin Sexton, waiting for a 
trade. I think you could be waiting for a long time, holding onto a player that's pretty shit at fantasy basketball, and uh, the payoff in the end actually might not be all that great. Uh, and maybe the trade doesn't happen. I mean, you, you're putting a bit of a gamble there. Um, the next guy here, Walker Kessler, I think it is time to maybe move on from him. I'm, I'm pretty... Um, uh, as we just lose the video there. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Still getting used to... We're going to switch over to this camera now. Um, just to finish off the podcast. Got to get that battery charged. Um, so, yeah, I think that Walker Kessler, he's he's one of those big man guys at the back end of um, your roster. He's the backup big man. You, there's a few of those guys in Duran, uh, Anyeka Okongwu, Isaiah Hartenstein, um, and then obviously Walker Kessler. Um, I'm, I'm forgetting a few. Isaiah Jackson. Those guys, they're, they're all obviously high upside guys. I think for me, Walker Kessler is the bottom and the back of that list. So I think that if you have him, um, it's probably time to move on. I think that there's limited uh, limited playing time that's going to be developing in the next sort of uh, little while, especially with Utah playing decent, um, getting some wins on the board. They might want to ex- extend this run for a little bit longer. He might be a pickup later in the season, but especially if you have sort of uh, if you're not way out in front, if you're already clear out in front, he's fine to hold if your team's doing that well. But um, for a lot of us who are holding a player like that, we need those wins now. And I think that of those players that I mentioned before, he is uh, probably the clear cut from them. Uh, Alexey Pokashevsky, he is definitely a cut. Um, some people still holding on to him. He did start today, but again, I just think that that OKC front court rotation is just going to be up and down uh, for the majority of the season. And there's no real clear winners there. He started, but he still only played 24 minutes. Um, yeah, four points, four rebounds, three assists. He had two blocks, which is cool. Um, but it's just, it's not trustworthy enough, I think, to me. I think I'd rather stream that position personally in a 12-team league. Um, and then the last couple of guys, Precious Achua. I had him as a must-add player last time. I think it might have been uh, just before they announced that uh, Scotty Barnes was back. And I did preface to say that while Scotty Barnes out, he's a great add. As soon as Scotty Barnes comes back in, he's okay to drop. So I do think that whenever you see any of those starters go down with an injury, that Precious will be the guy that gets a lot of value because basically they're just going to restructure their lineup so he's going to be the center because they're so long. Uh, and le- the only exception might be with a... Um, Freddie Van Vliet. If Fred Van Vliet is out, maybe Precious doesn't get that big role, but even still, he might. He might be a speculative ad. But right now, starters are healthy, so I think that Precious is someone you can drop. And uh, again, a lot of people might disagree with me, but James Wiseman, you can drop him. I don't think that he, again, as a backup center, he'd be behind Walker Kessler, in my opinion. Um, I just don't, I don't see his upside or his pathway to minutes. I'm coming around on his on-court Ability, I think he he has upside, obviously, but when you're playing on a team with championship aspirations, you're playing on a team that likes to go small traditionally, you've got several guys that can play that, that center position in Draymond, in Wiseman, in... Um, a few, even Kaminga plays at that position. You've got the, uh, the steady guy in... Jeez, I have so many blanks um, these days. You know the guy I'm talking about. Um, anyway, you've just got a few guys there that you can you can run through that position. I think that Wiseman is someone that just struggles to get minutes in the mid twenties that he needs. Even when he plays well, even when he's shooting eighty percent from the field, he usually often only struggles to get to eighteen, sixteen to eighteen minutes per nine. It's just not enough. It's just not enough. He's not the best rebounder as well. Um, doesn't give you the other sort of stuff that you think you need from him. So for me. James Wiseman is rostered in way too many leagues, guys. If you're holding on to him, I think it's time to move on. He was a decent stream last week. Warriors had a good schedule, but I think that this week it's not so good. So I think you can move on from Jimmy Wiseman. That will do it for us today, guys. Let us know down in the comments below. Again, uh, apologies about this camera. I'll have to get a, a decent charger for me to charge this while I'm recording because the battery did run out there. But let me know what you guys think about the new setup and the new podcast studio. We are going to be decking it out over the coming weeks. Um, still getting things out of boxes while we move in here, but hopefully it adds a, a slightly better visual element to the podcast if you're watching all over on YouTube. If you are on YouTube, make sure you guys give the video a big old thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button turn notifications on so when these podcasts drop you'll get first access to them first access to all the news follow me on twitter at ballboysmba and i will catch you guys next time laters